Not too loose, not too tight. Let's find out how to set up your DIR harness the perfect way. Hi and welcome to another episode. In this episode we'd like to, we'd like to show you how to adjust your DIR harness when it's fresh from the shop or when you just have to replace the webbing. So, you know, if we want to have one continuous loop of webbing in, instead of having clips and other adjustments to, um, to help you getting in and out. So, this video is for you to help you adjust your harness so that you don't have to use all these other extra things to get in and out of your harness. Because once it's set up correctly, you can easily move in and out, even with a dry suit or on the surface, as we'll show you later. So when you got your harness and your back plate, sometimes it comes shipped from the factory, like, like this one already pre-assembled, but obviously way too tight. So we need to adjust it to your person. Um, I like to add some extra things to the harness. So in this case, I have a little uh, tri glide, uh, sorry, a little um, uh, line cutter from a trilobite called the Easy Cut. Uh, I'd like to add an extra little D-ring on the left hand side a half D-ring uh, and more about that in a minute then we need to add the dry suit inflation gas um, holder to the side for argon or for air it's always good to have a couple of these uh, cut up uh, inner tubes from a mountain bike tire to tidy up excess webbing and finally uh, an extra spare uh, weight belt buckle because that's what you need uh, to keep your light canister in place. So, without further ado, let's jump in on how to adjust this harness. Let's start by taking off the, you know, extra bungees. And here we can see now we have just one big long piece of webbing that's going through and through. It's kept in place behind the back plate by these tri glides. So we need to adjust those so that the harness is exactly to the right size. Now there are some brands out there that have a system in place that still allows you to adjust the harness while you're wearing it to get in and out with more ease um, and still keeping one big long loop of webbing. Uh, those are obviously very nice. Um, in my opinion, personally, I don't use it. Um, even if I dive in a wetsuit with an aluminium backplate or in a dry suit with a steel backplate like this, for me one setup works fine. Um, and usually when I dive in really thin wetsuits in tropical conditions I have an aluminium backplate and that harness is adjusted slightly different anyway. But normally in a dry suit if you change your undergarment there shouldn't be big, a big adjustment needed. Um, so it's personal preference. If you use those systems, make sure it's a system that has still a continuous loop going through. And we, we don't really like those plastic buckles underneath the D-rings because, you know, plastic is easy to break and not that it's dangerous or life-threatening. It's just a pain in the beep. When you're out on a dive site on the boat, someone else comes along, helps you out and hits the plastic in an unlucky way and it breaks and there goes your dive. So it's not really necessary with those things. So what we're trying to do is adjust the, the length of this harness and after that place the D-ring in the correct position and then we'll do the exact same thing on the left hand side, finishing off with the placement of this buckle and the left D-ring and we'll add the um, half D-ring to the left hip also. Alright, now we're roughly in place. A good way if you're doing this on the floor is to put your knee on the back plate. In this case on the table I can just hold the crotch strap and then we'll just tighten these up from the bottom upwards and see if they're at the same length, making sure they're not completely off to the side. So making sure they're at the same length, which they are. And now we can see if it's a rough fit. Before we do that, if you're starting completely from scratch with your webbing, you start at the bottom and most webbings have a grommet on this side as you can see so you place the grommet right by the hole in the back plate and you come 
through the, the angled slots with both pieces of webbing. And then going up from the front of the back plate to the back of the back plate to the top straight um, slot and then over uh, over the back plate. Doing it that way when you make these little folds here, if you have logos on your harness from the manufacturer, they're aligned and they're both pointing the same way. Then you move down. Now think, when you're having this on your person, it should be no kinks involved. So I always keep a mental note that if I can take my hand and move, the, move it along the webbing like this, and it follows my body completely, it's smooth. So it doesn't kink like this. And that way, in this case, the webbing has colorful logos on this side and not on the other side, so it's easier to remember. But if it's completely black, you can just see that it goes smoothly to the inside of the two slots on the bottom of the back plate. Goes through the back plate, through the tri glide, and then back through the back plate again. And that's obviously the same on both sides. Now, to make sure the back plate or so make sure the harness is correctly um, sized, you need to take a, a measurement on your body just wearing a t shirt. So I gotta get rid of this sweater. Oh, whoop, that's gone. So let's see how close we got on the first try. What we're looking for is if we're having the harness on our backs, we like to be able to put a fist, like a normal fist, on our chest on both sides, like this. And when, when you have it here, then it's sort of tight on your back. See, there's not much more wiggle room now. So either I've done this a lot of times or I just got lucky on the first try because this is about where we want to be uh, with concerns to how tight it should be on your shoulders. A little extra check you can do is by keeping that distance, just holding it here and then trying to reach back. And you should just be able to touch the top of the back plate when you're reaching back. So in this case, two, not, two fists, not too tight, under your, under your shoulder straps on top of your chest. And that should tighten up the harness completely. Now we don't want these harness straps too tight because they don't give you the stability. Many people that transgress from a standard jacket style BCD to a harness setup like this want that feeling of cinching completely down uh, when wearing a BCD because they have a waist belt which is usually velcro or elastic or it's not very tight whereas in a harness system when we're done finished when we're finished setting this up it's actually the hip strap together with the crotch strap that gives you the stability a bit the same like on a backpack when you go hiking so the stability comes from the hip strap and not from the chest straps you want it to have enough room that when you have your big thick undergarment underneath your dry suit you have freedom of movement and not, not, nothing restricts blood flow or movement because of the webbing. So the webbing basically is only there to keep your tanks from falling off your back when you're standing on land. Uh, and underwater they have a D-ring so you can hang stuff off. Underwater these don't do much, they just keep stuff in place. So don't go and think that you need to cinch these down completely because you won't be able to move and you will not be able to come in and out very comfortably. So again, this is quite, this is a good starting point. Now let's move the D-rings in the correct position. All right. Now I've adjusted these D-rings so they're in roughly the right spot. What you're looking for is when the D-rings are on your on your shoulders that they're not too far down on the webbing because that makes them very lively under the water and they're not too far up on your shoulders because then you won't be able to reach them. So a sweet spot is if you're having the harness like this on your t-shirt again stand outside with your arms spread point your thumbs ahead of you and just go and see if you can reach the D-rings with your thumbs with moving a straight motion inwards and they're at the roughly right spot. Now all these things we're doing right now are getting you in the ballpark. 
you know, small centimeter adjustments up or, new, up or down or uh, loosening or tightening it after you've fitted it exactly to your suit. That's obviously something you have to uh, do on your own afterwards. But this will get you 99% of the way. So put the day rings here. When the D-rings, again, when the D-rings are too low, it's harder to work with them because you, you, you find it hard to find them every time you need to use them. And usually it's the other hand that clips D-rings, clips to the D-rings. So if you take your primary light, for example, it's on our left hand. If we want to place that on our right chest D-ring, in a temporary or primary or, or permanent um, position, we use our left hand to go under the long hose and clip it off. If that D ring is nice and high on my shoulders, I can make a like a little movement with my right shoulder to tighten up the harness, and that actually makes this D ring very nice and sturdy. So you can easily clip to that right chest D ring. Another thing is, if you take your long hose, for example, I want to clip it off. To the right D-ring. If it's here you can do the same thing with your shoulder and look how far out it sticks. So that way it's much easier. A little side note, clipping on with your opposite hand like for example lights from with your left hand on the right chest D-ring or stage or deco bottles with your right hand to the left chest D-ring makes it easier if you clip those from the top down. Your long hose on the other hand is clipped with your right hand to your right chest D-ring. Now it's much easier for the anatomy of your hands and shoulders and elbow and, chest and stuff to clip that from the bottom up. It's just easier to catch and easier to keep the gate open. That's a, maybe a topic for another video. So now we got the shoulder straps adjusted and we got the D-rings in place. Let's take a look at the hip strap. The right hip strap has nothing on it. It only has an extra little uh, weight belt buckle to keep a light canister in place if you use that. So we can go ahead and place that on the, ha on the harness. Back in the olden days what, uh, what they would do is they take the normal uh, weight belt buckle and place it so far up the left side that when you've attached everything the buckle ends up at the same place and the one buckle that closing your harness also keeps your light canister in place. Now, when, when DIR was invented, it was in cave country. So when you're taking on and off your gear in a sump in a cave, it's not really a big problem if the big light, light canister, you know, gets to be, you know, handed off right away. But when you use this in, in ocean diving and stuff like that, you have to get out of the water with a small boat. It makes sense that you don't lose your big light canister every time you take your harness off. So later it got evolved in placing an extra belt buckle here and just moving the primary belt buckle more to the central part of the harness. So right side is done for now. On the left side, like I mentioned before, uh, I like to add an extra little half D-ring, which is a smaller D-ring, as you can see here, than a, than a normal D-ring. And we, we add that a bit further down on the hip. We learned that trick from side mount diving and it helps us keeping the bottles more streamlined. So when a stage or deco bottle becomes very, very empty and very light, it sticks up and you can move it from the primary D-ring that sits a bit higher to the half D-ring that sits a bit lower on your body. And that keeps the tank a bit further down, more streamlined. It doesn't hit the cave roof and stuff like that or wet roof or whatever. So it's a nice little extra feature. So that goes in first. The big hair, big D-ring. If you're new to this, you probably fiddle around sometimes, but you take, you have to think that the weapon goes up through the D-ring and down. So it goes in the one on the left, then the D-ring goes in, place it where you roughly want it to have it, and then take the webbing go all the way through. Now you'd want this right in the middle, so past your hip bone so to speak. So the hip bone is here so a bit further down. It's nice to have it a bit tucked away so it's not too far uh, in front. This is about right. About a hand's width is, uh, is a good starting point. Again fine tune this to your own personal preference. Now I'd like to add my little 
cutting device. I'm a big fan of these easy cuts because they cut through about everything. They cut through about webbing, they cut through everything. You need lines and shit, so it's really, really strong. So now we add that here, just slides on the webbing. And then we can add our half D-ring in exactly the same way as the primary D-ring. Now we come where we need one of these extra pieces of uh, uh, mountain bike uh, inner tubes because we put that here because when we put the primary buckle on the excess webbing can be tucked underneath that and keeps it everything nice and tidy. But um, let's come in take a closer look at how we actually route the webbing through all these slotted uh, holes in the, in, the, um, in the buckle. As you can see there are three slots in the buckle. Uh, and the, the one that's furthest to the edge is a bit wider than the other three other two and that's because the webbing goes twice through this one so we start by going down into the buckle if you look at the buckle like this down into the buckle and then place it roughly where we need to have it we need to adjust this later and then we go up through the middle one like this and then we go down to the last one and now the webbing ends up on the inside of your harness again and then when we finally figured out where to place this we finish it off by putting this through everything again and then you got it nice and tight and it will never come undone unless you want it to so i leave it out so we can figure out where to place all these things all right, so when we want to adjust these, these things, there's a couple of things we need to take into account. Let's start with the one on the back. The one on the back needs to be just placed on the side of you. I prefer mine as far back as I can you know, get it, because that keeps the tanks nice and clean um, when they're hanging on my side. Also makes it a bit easier to find stuff. So keep that one right about there. Then the knife is in between these two uh, D-rings and the cutting device on your harness needs to be reachable with both hands so that I can reach it with my left hand and I can always reach it with my right hand also so that's that's an okay placement if somehow uh, this one gets in the way you just move this one to the front if that's if that's your case so it doesn't have to be in the middle you just need to be reachable with both hands then the the half earring it needs to be right in that soft spot on your on the front of your leg between your hip bone and the, the and your and your navel basically there's a there's a bit of soft spot there that's a good spot also for side mount diving that's a nice place for the half deering and then the buckle obviously we need to take into account that we're gonna wear our dry suit so it's a good idea to just take your hand place that in the middle or, or even a fist and then make sure that it reaches somewhere in the middle be careful it doesn't go like too far over because then your your crotch strap is in risk of catching like the inside and then you can if you're unlucky and you're scootering open up the belt so make sure it's either a little bit further to the left then further to the right I like to have mine underneath it like that but there's no real uh, right and wrong to, uh, to that. Just make sure that it doesn't get caught and open up when you're scootering. So that's about right. Now we can fix this in place and we'll use the last bungee to tidy everything nice up. So you just pull this one nice and tightly down and then come back through that first slot which is a bit wider than the others and tighten it up nice and complete. In this case it can go underneath this knife pouch and it ends up right in front of that take that little bungee here place it there perfect 
after you're done you connect all this together and then you cut this off to the right size be careful not to cut it too short um, you can always cut more off it's very hard to cut something off uh, so leave it for the first couple of dives make sure it's at the right length and then you adjust it I like to do mine with uh, one of these uh, rope burning cutting devices which basically almost looks like a soldering iron that can burn through the webbing I find that really carterizes this edge really nicely uh, if you just use a pair of scissors and a lighter it, it usually doesn't melt this far enough and you get frays and stuff like that so use one of those cutting devices otherwise go to town with a lighter if you don't have one of those last but not least the crotch strap let's adjust that one before we take it on again we need to uh, talk about where they go this D-ring I like to place mine just below the wing so then I can reach it but on the other hand I hardly use this some people use this for accessories spools and stuff I don't really like having things dingling around back there it's just sometimes I do it for a scooter if I need to get it out of the way but um, it's just there for accessories the one on the front is for the scooter um, and in this case it's, it's sewn in place so you can't really move this but sometimes if it's just a webbing you need to thread this through it's better if you're going to use it with a scooter to have the ones that are sewn in place because the scooter will put a lot of strength the strain on the connection with the deering here we want the crotch strap to be snug but not tight so if it's too tight it's going to restrict and it's going to be uncomfortable if it's too loose, it's going to be a problem with scootering. So just snug, that's it. As you can see, this one is a bit too loose, so I need to tighten it up a tiny little bit. Okay, so when adjusting this crotch strap, um, it's sometimes a bit fiddly and you think you've adjusted it and you just made it longer or, or you made it too short. Um, I just like to make a mental note of when I was wearing it, I need to move it down a little bit. So that little bit you need to move it down is exactly the amount you can pull out of this tri glide here. So about there. So if you then keep a hold of the tri glide and that piece of webbing you just pulled out, then you can adjust all the other stuff. And you basically need to pull and push that loose end up from the harness. then work your way down the whole thing keeping that D-ring in the same distance away from the back plate roughly here we go let's see if that's done the trick so that's about right I mean it's just you know snugly and comfortably uh, around my nether regions, so to speak. Um, again, keeping in mind that you have to have this on your dry suit, so don't make it super tight. Your dry suit will add a lot of bulk in every direction. So keep it there, and again, make fine adjustments after a couple of dives. So that's about it. Here you can see that the webbing is way too long. So if I want to cut this to length after I've had it on my, my, uh, my dry suit, I make sure that it sticks out about so much, about 10 centimeters or something like that, 10, 12 centimeters. Okay, we're about done with the harness uh, setup. We cut the ends off after a couple of dies and after we've adjusted everything perfectly. Uh, final thing we need to add is one of these argon bottle, dry suit inflation bottle um, uh, holders. So we place that in one of the holes of the back plate here and then a little bungee in the tiny hole here for the valve. Sometimes when you buy these kits, they come with two of these. Uh, I personally don't think it's necessary to have two of these straps. You have one strap to keeping the top of the tank in place and then the bungee here to keep the valve in place. And that's always worked for me, but you know, personal preference. Um, having said though, this only works for these small 0.85 liter aluminum tanks or one liter steel tanks. If you go bigger than that for dry suit inflation, it's better to mount them on the tanks with straps on the on the left tank because um, it gets a bit bulky if they're too big. So let's mount these and let's start with this one. 
Usually they come just with a, a bolt. It's a good idea to, um, to tighten these down with the tiny little dab of Loctite to uh, make sure they don't come undone. All right, now this is uh, connected. If you place this one on the front or the back, doesn't really matter. This way, it's, I like it, it's nice and clean. But it's basically that one that keeps the tank in place, like this. Now, we put the little bungee. You've seen me made, make this nut before, if you've watched some of the other videos. And it's basically the exact same bungee we use to tighten up our uh, SPG on our stage or deco bottles. So, almost 30 centimeters of string, a fisherman knot, to tie it all together, making one loop that doesn't go, that doesn't come undone. And we have one nice loop that's about the same width as your hand. So the loop is here and it can be adjusted obviously if you want it shorter or bigger. Um, and the, the thickness of the bungee doesn't really matter as long as it is strong enough to keep that valve in place and doesn't flop around. Uh, a short little, uh, a quick little way of shortening it up is to just by passing it through the two of these and then out. That way it makes the loop a little bit shorter if, if you need to do that in a hurry. So, but now we're almost done. All we need to do now is to put this one together with the wing. Right, finished. Let's, uh, let's put it all together. So the back plate basically sandwiches the wing between the tanks and the back plate. So one of the advantages of using a, a wing backplate combination is that you can change the wing out when you need to change, for example, from a twin set to a single tank. Um, or you travel somewhere else where you have to rent stuff. You can take your own backplate and rent the wing or something like that. Um, so at UTD we are brand neutral. We don't say buy this brand from for the other or by uh, certain brands only. Um, we look at configuration most of all. And yes, some brands do have more of a DIR mindset in their manufacturing process. And that makes it easier for you because you have to do less adjustments and less modifications to the system. But um, there's no, I mean, buy whatever you like. Uh, certain things are just better quality than other things. Make, be in mind that you usually pay uh, or get what you pay for. So when it comes to backplate, it can either be steel, aluminium, carbon, if you really, really want to spend it all, um, really nice. Thickness doesn't really matter. I mean, for traveling, it's, uh, it's nice to have a thinnish backplate. Uh, always keep in mind that you can add weight, you cannot take weight away from the backplate. So there are several options you have to add in weight to the backplate. You can use a V-weight, which is basically a, a like a keel that goes in between the two twin sets uh, tanks here and it gets held in place because the back plate goes on top of that together with the wing. You can have a P weight which is uh, useful if you're doing uh, diving with single tanks which is laying in this recess here of the back plate. You can have a tail weight which is connected to the bottom uh, stud of the um, the twin set and hangs further down so you can adjust for your trim. So there are loads of options. You can also buy these pockets that go on the side. Be, uh, be aware that you buy one with a D-ring on the left pocket and no D-rings on the right pocket is not necessary. And you can adjust this as, as needed. This D-ring gets replaced by the D-ring on that pocket. So that's also uh, uh, an option. Um, now, when it comes to wings, we prefer the donut wing. The donut wing is basically a circular wing where the air pocket is one big round O, like a donut. Um, other types of wings are horseshoe wings, where the air pocket is basically like a horseshoe going up, like an upside down U. Um, both work equally well. Uh, the advantage of using a donut wing is that the air can travel along the bottom part as well as along the top part. Now, when it comes to dumping the gas, if you're in a tight situation, it's nice if the air can pass through the bottom as well and doesn't have to go up, because uh, that way air can easily move throughout the whole wing. So it gives you some added benefits. 
There are even some wings that have a little bit more lift capacity here on the bottom, which is nice to keep your, your buttocks up. Uh, so we prefer a donut wing. In this case, it's a, uh, a double, double uh, wing system. It's not a double bladder system, but it's an outer, very strong corduroy type material. And when you take the zipper out, it's basically a very strong nylon um, waterproof bag in, in, inside of this. So it's super strong and super durable. As you can see, there is only one dump valve on these wings, and that's the way we like it. There's no need for having multiple dumps everywhere. Um, a dump valve on the left bottom part of your wing is where you want it. Because, think about it, what is the gas source that feeds your wing? It's coming from the right post, from the right regulator. More on that in another video. But, so if you have a problem with your wing, you can actually dump gas at the same time as you're closing off the source of that problem if your wing auto inflates for example. So that's why left hand side is nice. Now the inflator hose should be nice and short, not too long, no need for it to have it all the way down here. If you're having trouble dumping the gas from your wing, a lot of divers come with this um, idea that they need a longer hose because then they can reach it further up. But in effect you're creating a siphon, if you're reaching this up to the surface and the longer the hose, the bigger the siphon. So air doesn't travel downwards, it goes up only. So basically the shorter the hose, the faster you have it where this exhalation hole is higher than the air in your wing. So I prefer to have mine where it's just above the D-ring. Not too long and not too short, obviously, otherwise it won't reach down there, but right there. Uh, it's connected straight into the wing with, in this case, a little elbow connection. Some of them go straight on the top, doesn't really matter. Uh, we just don't like those pull dump um, devices where you pull on the inflator hose and it activates a dump valve here, which you see on a lot of BCDs, jacket file BCDs. Um, in my opinion, this hose is the weakest point of this wing. This will never, never, you can drive over with this with a car. But this is a rubber, it gets, hit by the sun it sometimes cracks so beware that you check this regularly but if you on top of that start adding extra strain by pulling on this hose every time you want to go down it just add unnecessary failure risk and if you pull this hose off you lose your whole wing you lose the cap capability of adding gas to the wing because it'll just escape and all the gas that's in there will also escape it's a very big problem so Simple device like this, an elbow or straight connection, no dump valves, no nothing. The inflator should just be properly maintained and I think I'll make a video soon on how to surface this yourself because it's super simple. It's basically a, a, little, um, a little second stage without the membrane because when you push this button, two o-rings move past the little hole and air comes in the wing. Super easy. The one on the other side is basically a big rubber disc that keeps the hole from uh, leaking air. When you push it, the spring pushes the disc away and air comes out. Now, if you've noticed, some wings, when they're new, they have this little rubber, um, yeah, I don't know if you call it a mouthpiece or whatever, have it on there. I prefer to take it away so it doesn't get caught in anything and I find it actually easier to orally inflate my wing when that plastic thingamabob is not there. All right, let's put it together, uh, the wing and the back plate and some weights before. A small, tiny uh, little modifications to the wing. Again, I don't like this rubber thingy, so we take that away. On the dump valve, there's this little ball. Some wings have a really big big thing. I, I personally don't, don't think that's needed. Um, so I take that away as well and just add a couple of simple figure eight knots and those, those knots are not really there to, uh, to be felt. They're just there to give some extra uh, resistance on your glove because they're, it's easier to find this valve than it is to find a string, regardless if there is a little plastic thinger on there. So always reach for the valve. Let's figure out this one is loose. Always reach for the valve 
and then in the center of the valve there is that little string um, there's also another video on this channel called tips and tricks where I show you how to use uh, this system all right so that's it for the wing we'll uh, start by adding the V weight I use a little two kilo V weight here and that just goes underneath the wing on the first stud here or the last stud and then you place the wing on top as an industry standard uh, those bolts on a twin set are 28 inches apart or sorry 28 centimeters apart or 11 inches apart uh, so your wing should fit on those um, that's there and we place the wing and place the back plate make sure none of the straps are caught underneath and we take some washers and some wing nuts and tighten it down now make sure that those rods don't stick up too far and you know potentially damage your dry suit so just make sure they don't they don't are, they're not too high up they stick up like two two and a half centimeters or an inch or something like that that's that's perfectly fine you can feel it here it's, it won't hurt your suit so that's about it it's adjusted it's mounted it's all together all you need to now to do is to put on your all your accessories like lights and stuff and obviously some regulators and you're good to go uh, for diving how to attach all the other stuff is a subject for another video that will be on this channel very soon and uh, also how to um, put all your regulator um, together uh, regulators together uh, how the hoses should route and how long the hoses should be and all that sort of stuff it's also a video coming very soon on this channel so subscribe to this channel share it with your friends uh, leave us a comment if you like it if you don't like it hit that thumbs down that's also perfectly fine but let me know why uh, let me know why you didn't like the video so we can learn if you have some tips and tricks on how you adjust this harness be, don't be shy, share them in the comments and uh, stay sharp and stay diving. See you out there.